Welcome. This is our Algebra 2 Quadratic Functions Lesson Number 9, Modeling with Quadratic Functions Home Review Part 1. Hope this video is helpful, and if you do find it helpful, I would appreciate if you hit up, uh, give this video a like, and uh, also leave any questions or comments in the comment section below. So for number one, the height of a missile t seconds after it's been fired is given by h of t equals negative 4.9 t squared plus 44.1 t. Which the following represents the, the number of seconds it will take for the record, rocket to reach its highest height. So um, in these quadratic function problems, there is a couple of things you're looking out for. Really, there's really two things. So when looking for time interval when the function is positive or negative, you have to find the roots. Also, when asked to find the value of time where the height is equal to zero, you find the roots. So find when the roots or the zeros are important to figure out when, usually when, it, when the object lands on the ground, or, um, you know, so that's usually a, a pretty important thing to find. And the second thing to find, we're looking for the highest or lowest value, find the axis symmetry, and then find the y value. We're looking for the vertex. The x value is a time when the highest or lowest point occurs, and the y value is the value. So this means in this case, for our problem, if we want to find when something occurs, the highest or lowest value, we're finding the axis symmetry. And so here for this problem, we see that the number of seconds it will take for the rocket to reach its highest height. So it's not asking for the highest height, it's asking for when. So we let, well in this case, t, because of x, equals negative b over 2a. And since our a value is negative 4.9, our b value is 44.1. And there's no c values we thought of here. So here we have t equals negative 44.1 all over 2 times negative 4.9. Okay. And so we calculate this and we get 4.5. Okay, so at after 4.5 seconds, the object reaches the highest height, missile reaches the highest height, so the answer will be 2. I believe in this case, we, if we were to plug 4.5 into the function, we might get one of the other answers up, so. The daily cost per car manufactured at a certain automotive plant decreases as the number of cars increase, and then increases again due to over, over time uh, production costs. So it's going to decrease and increase. The cost C per car is given by C of n equals 0 0.3 n squared minus 90 n plus 12,450, where n represents the number of cars produced, which the following is the lowest per cost car. And again, the highest and lowest value we're looking for in this case, the axis symmetry. But since now the question is asking for the the cost, which of the following, which of the following is the lowest cost per car? We need to find the matching y value for that. So what's going to happen is we're going to find our a, b, and c value. A is going to be 0.3. Our b value is negative 90, and our c value is 12,450. Okay, and so we're going to use our axis symmetry, right? And so here it's n, which is normally x, but n here equals negative b over 2a, and we get negative of negative 90 over 2 times 0.3. And so now we get 90 over 0.6. So we'll calculate this here, 90 divided by 0.6, we get 150. But in this case, and 150 is not the cost, it's the number of cars that would give us the lowest price per car cost. So now we got to plug this into our formula here for, uh, for n, for c of n. So c of 150 equals 0 0.3 times 150 squared minus 90 times 150 plus 12,450. Okay. So let's take a look here. If we do 150 squared, we get 22,500 times 0.3, 
that's 6,750. If we multiply 90 by 150, well, negative 90 by 150 is going to be negative 13,050. So now we combine this here. We add 6,750 to negative, or actually 6,750 minus 13,500 plus 12,450. We're going to get 5,000. $700 as our cost, C of 150. And this will be the lowest cost. Now, how do we know it's lowest cost? This is a parabola facing upwards. So the lowest cost is occur at the vertex. Okay. So my answer for number two is going to be choice one, A decathlete at the Olympics throws a javelin such that its height h above the ground can be modeled as a quadratic function of horizontal distance d that has traveled. Which of the following is a realistic quadratic function for this scenario? Okay, well, let's take a look here. So, so h is so in this case the height is based upon the di the distance is traveled. Okay, so the height over time. You know, one of the things one of the things we'll see in this case is that it cannot be choice one or two because the height of the javelin is going to go upwards and then come back downwards again. The shape of this parabola is definitely going to be facing downwards, and therefore a must be less than zero. Okay. Now. So that's the first thing. The second thing in this case we're going to figure out is that now looking at choice three and four, which one is this makes sense to be to be um, which one of these makes the most sense here? Uh, so the realistic quadratic quadratic scenario. Well, three and four. The only difference between is a positive and negative three. Now, one of the things about the quad about the height function, usually it's you know in this case is that we're probably going to take a look here and see that um, we're probably going to see in this case that uh, based upon distance, right? The where the uh, the distance distance uh, traveled. So I would say that you know the three here, which is the difference, is going to be a height of the person. Okay, so the from where it's thrown. So consider in this case that the person is about you know holds it up about three feet above the ground the starting height would be about would be plus three so when when of course it travels no time as like distance is already three feet above the ground and the negative three would be well you're kind of below the ground when you're throwing this which no no decathlete actually does so the answer must be choice three because of the fact that the height as thrown the uh, is, is held at is three feet above the ground initially A ball thrown vertically in the air reaches its peak height after 3.5 seconds. If its height as a function of time is given by negative 16 t, negative 16 squared plus b of t plus 4, then which of the following is the value of b? So, after, so it reaches peak height after 3.5 seconds, it must mean the axis of symmetry is equal to 3.5. Well, here our a value is neg 16. Our B value is B, and we don't know. So in this case, the C is 4. So T time equals negative B over 2A. Well, we know that the time it takes to reach its highest point is 3.5. And we do not know what B is, so we leave it as B. However, A is neg 16, so 2 times neg 16. Well, this gives the equation 3.5 equals, well, neg B, excuse me, neg B over neg 32. And the negatives divide out. So this becomes 3.5 equals B over 32. Well, B is just going to be equal to 32 times 3.5. So we multiply 32 times 3.5 
say 2 times 3.5, we should get 112. A positive 112 in this case. So the answer for number for number four will be choice four. A tour company has a ticket price that goes down two dollars for every digital person who signs up for a group trip. They charge per person 52 minus 2n, where n is the number of people that go on the trip. The total revenue r is a function of people who go on the trip is two is is well, not two here, so it should, should just be r squared. So I'm going to delete this here. R is equal to 52n minus n squared. How many people maximize revenue for the tour of this trip? And so when we say maximize revenue, we're talking about the, again, the axis of symmetry. And so that being the case, our A value is going to be negative 1 because it's the number multiplying the n squared. Our B value is 52. And so we're going to use our axis of symmetry, n equals negative B over 2A. So negative 52 over 2 times negative 1, which means in this case we'll have negative 52 over negative 2, or 26. That means, again, because r, r is a parabola facing upwards, facing downwards actually, the highest revenue value will occur at the vertex. And so the idea is that at the axis of symmetry here, again, um, the number of people we're looking for, and, and is 26 people. All right. So again, when we're asking for the highest or lowest value, we are usually find the axis symmetry, and for the value itself, we want to find the the matching y value for the vertex. So for this one, n's number of, tw of twenty people is twenty six people, twenty six people. If we're asked to find the maximum revenue, we plug in twenty six for n though. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be the end of our algebra two quadratic functions lesson number nine modeling with quadratic functions home review part one. I hope this is helpful to you guys. And uh, if anything, please leave any questions or comments in the leave any questions or comments in the comment section below. And of course, if you found it helpful, please give it a like. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care and be safe.